straight ahead on CBS 4 News at noon, from parties and picnics to solemn memorials, South Florida marks Memorial Day. President Bush observing a holiday at the site of one of the bloodiest battles in history, Normandy, France. Plus, workers now fighting Mother Nature as they try to recover victims from a deadly bridge collapse. Thieves target a Broward business, and it's not the first time it's been hit. We'll have a full report. A terrible accident leaves one person dead at a well-known theme park. And researchers are talking about a new drug that works longer than Viagra. And breaking news out of Jerusalem where a bomb has exploded in a mall and there are casualties. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alita Haytayan. I'm Jen Rosado, CBS 4 News at noon is next. Simon Baker was named one of People's 50 Most Beautiful. Tuesday, catch him in one of the season's best dramas. I am here to represent that child. The Guardian. Then, what looks like child abuse. That doesn't look like a rope burn to me. Could be something even more shocking. This is a boy's life. Judging Amy after The Guardian, CBS Tuesday. Live from the heart of New York City, it's Broadway's Night to Shine. And the Tony goes to... At the Tony Awards, with spectacular performances from your all-time favorite shows, including Oklahoma. Wow! And many, many more. Join hosts Bernadette Peters and Gregory Hines in a celebration for the nation. The Tony Awards, live CBS Sunday. Memorial Day 2002, remembering a fallen hero and those who are fighting for freedom half a world away. Tonight on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. This morning on The Early Show, we had a fashion show of chic, inexpensive editions that'll put some sizzle into your summer wardrobe. For more information, click on cbsnews.com. And tomorrow morning, if you want that bronze tan look without the dangers of the sun, we've got some four-star beauties that do the job without streaking. Wake up to what's happening on The Early Show. To protect Navy secrets, Harm may have to turn in his best friend. We're talking about national security. Don't miss Jag CBS Tuesday. Now, live. This is CBS 4 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. We begin with breaking news out of Israel. A bomb has just exploded near Tel Aviv. Gary Nelson is live in the newsroom with the latest for us. Gary. Well, Ken and Alita, indeed, were just coming in a few minutes ago from Israel of another bombing there. The word is that this bomb exploded in a mall in uh, Peta Tikva. That's near Tel Aviv, a suburb of Tel Aviv, a crowded mall there. Rescue workers responding to the scene are reporting many people have been wounded. Israeli Army Radio tells us that there are at least 15 wounded in that bombing at a mall in Petah Tikva near Tel Aviv, Israel this morning. No word as yet on any deaths. We're going to continue to follow this for you, and we'll have more as it comes in. We're live in the newsroom, Gary Nelson, CBS 4 News. With thoughts of September 11th and U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan, South Florida and the nation gather to mark Memorial Day. As we think about U.S. soldiers fighting in the war on terrorism, there are also thoughts about safety here in South Florida. Now, local police hoping there would not be a repeat of last year's trouble. CBS 4's Roger Borges is live on Miami Beach with the holiday wrap-up. Roger. Ken and Alita, this started out as a very chaotic morning after one person was stabbed at a local nightclub here. It happened just after 2 o'clock this morning at level nightclub that person was sent to the hospital the victim is now listed in stable condition at jackson memorial hospital memorial day starting off as a bloody one on miami beach after a stabbing at level nightclub sent a party goer to the hospital it's crazy it's, 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 as a tourist i don't see it. it it's not working for me i don't even know i'm gonna come here next year the chaotic scene playing out just after 2 o'clock this morning on 12th Street and Washington Avenue. Two suspects arrested on the spot. Police and moving in, some even in riot gear, shutting down the club and ordering everyone out. And my girlfriend got hit in the head, you know, with, with some tear gas. But she didn't do nothing. She was like, she's walking around, you know, she got sprayed up with tear gas. So far, more than 60 arrests have been made this holiday weekend on Miami Beach. That number down from last year, where more than 200 people were arrested. This year, the city keeping the peace with 400 police officers patrolling a crowd of nearly 400,000. Our police people have been absolutely superb, um, and the Goodwill Ambassadors, the whole combination has really 
uh, made us a very safe city. Most beachgoers putting this morning's incident behind them. There's always going to be a bad apple somewhere in the crew, so I'm not going to allow that bad apple to spoil my good time. I came down here to have a good time. Veterans and kids of all ages also attending a ceremony honoring our nation's fallen heroes. Memorial Day is like to honor everyone here, the veterans of World War I, World War II. Memorial Day is a very important factor. Something we live through, that we went through this in our lives. Now, if you're headed to South Beach, keep in mind Ocean Drive is shut down from 5th Street to 15th Street, and most side streets going east and west are shut down as well. We're live on South Beach, Roger Borges, CBS 4 News. And a gun salute at the North Miami Veterans Monument honors fallen heroes there, too. People gathered showing their American pride by waving flags and watching participants lay a wreath in remembrance. Fire. With a 21 gun salute, the flyover veterans from several wars gathered at Lauder Fort Lauderdale Cemetery this morning to remember those who didn't make it back alive. Several veterans wore their old uniforms and saluted to the playing of taps. Well, keeping with tradition, President Bush is marking Memorial Day from France today. In Normandy, the president is recalling the sacrifice made by thousands who died liberating France more than five decades ago. Bush spoke from a cliff where some 9,000 American graves are lined with white crosses. The president also mentioned those lives lost in the war in Afghanistan. This is a day our country has set apart to remember what was gained in our wars and all that was lost. Our wars have won for us every hour we live in freedom. Our wars have taken from us the men and women we honor today and every hour of the lifetimes they had hoped to live. The president also joined French President Jacques Chirac in lying wreaths at the cemetery and memorial. Bush now heads to Rome to wrap up this week's trip to Europe. And at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, thousands gathering to pay tribute to their loved ones and to remember those who died in the name of freedom. The wreath was also placed at the Tomb of the Unknowns. Well, this Memorial Day has special significance to people living in Manhasset, New York. That's on Long Island on the North Shore. Fifty of their residents there lost lives in the September 11th attacks. This afternoon, everyone is being asked to observe a moment of remembrance at exactly 3 p.m. The moment of silence is intended to unify the nation and remember soldiers who died serving their country. Well, however you observe this Memorial Day, it wouldn't hurt to have some sunny skies. No, it sure wouldn't. Mm -hmm. CBS 4's Chris Paulson is in weather control with a quick look outside. Chris, what do you think? Well, the forecast looks much better than it did last week when we were trying to detail that for you. Let's take a look at what's happening. The weak area of low pressure basically extends all the way through the Bahamas across Cuba, with a broader area of low pressure out here in the Caribbean Sea. Now, I'm going to talk more about that in full weather and coming up in just a bit. But first off, a little closer to home, you can see almost a little swirl and some clouds here moving through the um, islands of the Bahamas right in here. And what we're seeing is winds at the surface kind of pushing in some of those showers. So that's basically what we're looking at. Real-time radar indicating some showers right there over State Highway 836 in Coral Gables. Elsewhere, not bad for this holiday, but still a rain chance for this afternoon. We'll detail coming up in just a bit. Don't go away. Thank you very much, Chris. A Fort Lauderdale business owner has nothing to celebrate today. Thieves stealing several scooters from his shop. Now, he came into work this morning to find broken glass and thousands of dollars in vehicles gone. CBS 4's Joan Murray is on the scene. Joan. Well, you can see the glass is completely missing from the front store window. Now, this is the type of scooter stolen. Police did recover a getaway vehicle, but they are still looking for the three juveniles and two adults seen running away. Covered some of our... For the second time this month, smash and grabbers break into this federal highway store, making off with go pets. They're going to play with them. They're, they're used, and uh, unfortunately, our, uh, our system doesn't have enough uh, punishment for, for people under 18. The go pets range in price from $400 to $950. This time, police recover four go pets, but a handful are still missing. This on top of the scooters lost three weeks ago during the last break-in. The question is, do you report it to your insurance company and, and risk being uh, uninsured or and just take the loss? Uh, I probably will go that route. I probably won't report it and just take the loss. The manager will take the loss, but now he's looking at getting bars on his windows to prevent another break-in. So the manager is out several thousand dollars. He tells me he'd like to see stricter laws enforced for juvenile crime. 
Live in Fort Lauderdale, Joan Murray, CBS 4 News. Search crews are working through the holiday, searching for more victims from a deadly bridge collapse in Oklahoma. Officials are now trying to slow down the Arkansas River just so they can reach the bodies. The accident happened yesterday in Weber Falls in the eastern part of the state. CBS 4's Jim Acosta has the latest from there. Alita, earlier this morning, emergency crews recovered a fourth vehicle. That brings the number of victims to four and climbing. And the rest of the vehicles are believed to be as deep as 40 feet below the river's surface. On the Arkansas River, the mission has gone from rescue to recovery. At daybreak, divers return to the murky waters to retrieve the victims of a deadly bridge collapse that has claimed perhaps a dozen lives. With the swift currents, there is little hope that anyone could have survived the 75-foot plunge below. We've got several vehicles that are marked, uh, so the divers will know where to go down to. Hopefully the current hasn't shifted them too much. Early Sunday morning, a barge hit a side spin of the bridge that carries I-40 over the river, snapping off a 500-foot section of the interstate. Okay. Unsuspecting drivers on both sides of the roadway careened over the edge and toppled into the water. We were approximately six, seven, eight hundred yards from the bridge when it uh, when it fell, and kept seeing the big splashes, you know, and finally realized that's cars going off the end of the bridge. Investigators are now going over the barge captain's story, that he blacked out just before impact, possibly from a seizure. He just terribly uh, distraught and shook up about the incident, but the, the medical people are doing a good job taking care of him, and, and so we'll, we'll find out more in due course. Emergency crews must recover another seven to nine vehicles before their job is finished. A crane will be used to place each of the cars and trucks on a barge to help identify the dead. Beyond a human tragedy, this is a traffic nightmare. More than 20,000 drivers and their families returning home from the holiday weekend will have to take back roads to get around this disaster. In Weber's Falls, Oklahoma, Jim Acosta, CBS 4 News. Thank you, Jim. And just a few moments ago, we heard from a survivor of that bridge collapse. Here's just some of what he had to say. All I know is I don't know how I got out of my truck. There was two people in a boat. Uh, I know one of them was uh, out in wheel host. Uh, he pulled me out of the water. Then another man and woman took me to the hospital. What do you have to say about their effort? I thank them. I mean, I want to get together with them one day when I get well. That is one of the survivors of that bridge collapse incident. Well, in other news, the state panel investigating the disappearance of Rilia Wilson is calling for change and preparing to present their findings to the governor tomorrow. Now, members of the committee are blaming the lowest ranks of the Department of Children and Families for the child's disappearance, and they're proposing several short- and long-term changes. Among them, police must be called if a child is missing. Case workers need to visit each child every month, and the DCF must have current photos and fingerprints of every child on file that policies and procedures that govern children and families are all in place. But for years, there has been institutional fraud. There's nothing in these recommendations that couldn't be done. There's none of this stuff that couldn't have been done 10, 15 years ago. There's none of this stuff that couldn't be done now. A well, five-year-old Rilia has been missing for 18, make that 16 months. A grandmother says a DCF worker took the child. Well, Francisco Martinez is in a lot of trouble this afternoon. He faces one count of child abuse after police say he threw his one-year-old son out of his SUV. Martinez apparently became agitated when the boy climbed into the driver's seat with him. He then tossed him out the door, out of the car, but the door was open, so the little boy landed on the pavement. He's okay. The mother says it was an accident. Martinez is also being questioned by the INS because he may be here illegally. The results of Florida Student Assessment Test, or FCAT, are in the mail right now. Results for 1.5 million students in grades 3 through 10 were sent out last week. The comparison of how students did this year, as opposed to last, are still being calculated. In other news, we're following for you this noon. Security changes are underway at one South Florida airport. We're live with the details on how it could affect your travel plans. A deadly accident on a roller coaster shuts down a well-known theme park. And wildfires out of control and firefighters fear the worst is yet to come. A new drug that reportedly lasts longer than Viagra. It's all ahead. And we will, of course, update you on that explosion in Israel that we told you about a little earlier ago, just east of Tel Aviv when we come back. 
I'm Elliot Rodriguez. And I'm Maggie Rodriguez. Tonight at 5 and 11, CBS 4 News investigates a risky rush. A cheap high and better sex. That's what this illegal drug promises, but it can also kill. CBS 4's Lori Stein goes undercover to show you who's selling it, how easy it is to get it, and what's being done about it. Don't miss Risky Rush tonight at 5 and 11 only on CBS 4 News. How far would you go to enhance sexual performance? They claim it enhances uh, sexual performance. Would you do something illegal, something dangerous, something deadly? CBS 4 News' Lori Stein investigates a fantasy sex drug invading South Florida. Who's selling it? You don't care that it's considered very dangerous? Could you please leave the store? And who's buying a risky rush? Tonight at 5 and 11 on CBS 4 News. You're watching CBS 4 News at noon. The number one midday news. Welcome back, everyone. We're continuing to follow that breaking news out of Jerusalem, just east of Tel Aviv. Apparently, there was a suicide attack there just a short time ago. We do know that 50 people are believed wounded. No word yet on any casualties. But again, a suicide attack taking place at a mall just east of Tel Aviv. We will continue to follow this story for you and bring you the latest as soon as it develops. Well, today marks the beginning of new security at Miami International Airport. It affects international flights, which often come through Miami. CBS 4 Shamari Stone is live at MIA with the very latest for Shamari. Ken, well, the new security uh, procedures start today, and now international passengers are required to submit personal information, face INS inspection, and they have to wait for their flights in a separate area. As people get ready to head back home after Memorial Day weekend, international passengers now have to follow new security procedures. They would be required to go through a full inspection process which means they would go to immigration, be presented and queried. Then they would go through customs and have their baggage checked. And passengers are now required to give personal information in advance and wait for their flights in a separate area. I'm glad that they're asking a lot of questions. The more security they do, the better, the more safe I feel. So uh, I don't mind if they put us through a little extra security. But some hope the information gathering doesn't violate people's privacy. To a certain extent, it's a matter of invading a little of your privacy, you know, and your personal information. But, I mean, when it comes to, um, if you're really traveling, you know, that kind of way, then I feel safe. I feel fine. I don't have any problems with that. Before September 11th, more than 450,000 international passengers flew out of MIA. But after 911, that number dropped to about half. Airport officials hope these new procedures will lift people's confidence. I feel very good. I feel safe. It's for everyone's own safety. It's yeah, okay. sure, I agree. It's better to be safe than sorry, so yeah. definitely it's better, safer. Longer out of waiting, but definitely being safe is a great thing. And airport officials aren't telling us what specific information the airlines are asking for. They say the information is necessary to know who's flying in the air. Live at MIA, I am Shamari Stone, CBS 4 News. Thank you, Shamari. A holiday weekend trip to the casinos turns deadly in Texas when a tour bus crashes. The bus was returning to Dallas from a Louisiana casino when it veered off the road, slamming into a tree yesterday. One person was killed, nearly 60 injured. Officials aren't sure what made the driver veer off the road. The impact crumpled the front of the bus and ripped a hole in the roof. An amusement park worker dies while on the job. It happened at Six Flags Amusement Park in Georgia. A spokesman says the 59-year-old man was struck on the head by the leg of a passenger who was on the Batman ride yesterday. That victim was apparently in a restricted area. In health news, a new treatment for breast cancer is being hailed as a medical breakthrough. A San Antonio woman is the first to undergo brachytherapy, which uses radioactive seeds inside the body as opposed to radiation from the outside. The big difference is treatment time, several days instead of several weeks. Doctors say many women will still need mastectomies and chemotherapy depending on the size of the tumor. We'll move over to Viagra. Two drug companies have developed an anti-impotence drug, which officials say is longer lasting than Viagra. The drug is Cialis, and a spokesman says it lasts up to 36 hours. Last month, Food and Drug Administration officials said they needed more studies before approving it. 
for sale. No, don't go there, Alita. I know she's <laughs> I thinking of all the one-liners, and we're just not going to go there. You sound guilty. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Moving on. Up next on CBS 4 News at New Mother Nature seems to be cooperating this Memorial Day, but will the sunshine stay with us through the week? Chris Paulson's forecast is next. Plus, the battle is on to tame some raging wildfires out west. And she proved she wasn't clueless. Now, Reese Witherspoon is trying to show us the importance of being earnest. Jade sits down with her one-on-one -on -one tonight on CBS 4 News at 5.30. Stay with us. We'll be right back. CBS 4 and UM Sylvester want you to be safe in the sun. This is today's UV Index. Brought to you by UM Sylvester, leading the search for a cancer cure. We have a winner for our fairy tale wedding, and the choice wasn't easy. Hello, I'm CBS 4's Maggie Rodriguez. After judges evaluated dozens of applications, Jacqueline Witkowski and Darren Machashik are the winners. Neighbors for Neighbors, La Paloma Restaurant, and The Perfect Wedding Guide will help this couple with everything from wedding attire to a honeymoon at the Biltmore Hotel. Learn more about our winning couple by logging onto our website at neighborsfornaybors.org. Super Telecom, the proud underwriters of Neighbors for Neighbors. Tonight, the King of Queens says two words you never thought you'd hear him say. No pudding. No pudding? No pudding. Then, when you run into a little trouble, it's nice to have a supportive wife. And who's the bigger success, Ray or his brother? You're a lieutenant in the New York City Police Department. What about me? You're fine. You're married to me. Next, Tanya save a man at the end of his rope. You're a good-looking guy. This is a really bad time for me to start a new relationship. Great. I'd rather hang himself than go out with me. TV's biggest night of comedy, CBS Tonight. Hundreds of people have been forced to evacuate after a brush fire in Arizona continues to rage. Firefighters believe the worst is yet to come. The flames have consumed more than 12,000 acres near Mount Lemon, and there are extremely dry conditions. The fire hasn't damaged any buildings, but is threatening about 700 homes. The fire is only about half contained. Chris Paulson here right now. He has done his best forcing off with his own hands a low-pressure system that was threatening our weekend weather. Are you going to be able to push it off entirely? We may have Monday? to deal with it well, one way or another. It's still out there. Actually, there's a couple of things going on through the Caribbean and also right just in our back door in the Bahamas. Let's take a look at what's going on. First off, look at the clouds out there. Still look a little flat. And what we are looking at is warmer temperatures for today. 84 West Miami-Dade weather control. Fort Lauderdale at 85. Key West 77. Humidity at 61%. Winds are out of the east at 17, gusting to 25 miles per hour. And we are seeing some showers on that breeze that continues to push in. And I can show you on real-time radar, most of them now, very light showers have been through Dade County. In fact, just a minute ago, this was a little bit heavier through Coral Gables. Elsewhere, as we confirm, through Broward, also into Miami-Dade, really nothing going on. But the rain chance is still in there for today. I don't think they're going to last for very long, so go ahead with the outdoor plans. As you take a look at the high-detailed satellite for today, a couple of things I want to show you. Very unsettled weather, basically from the, from the Bahamas all the way across Cuba and down into the Caribbean Sea, where we have a weak area of low pressure. And this is basically the same area of low pressure we've been talking about the last couple of days. But a couple of things are happening right now. They're going to hold things down just a bit. And that is very strong upper-level winds that we expect to continue to sort of to shear and rip this thing apart. Now, the area of low pressure is right in here, and we don't expect much from it, at least in the next day or so. And that would have to, at least also the winds would have to relax. And I can confirm those winds. Take a look at this right here. Watch this cloud vroom, as it zips on by. And you can also see elsewhere in the Caribbean Sea, very hostile winds for any type of tropical development. A little closer to home, though, we do expect possibly an area of low pressure to develop over the next day or so. The big weather staying to our north, unsettled weather basically over us and through the Bahamas. This elongated area of low pressure you can see here and showers and storms possible. Tomorrow, again, there's your rain chance. By Wednesday, we think things will get spun up just a bit. And we can get some wraparound moisture here in South Florida with a better chance for showers and storms. But even then, not a washout. This will be watched as it moves off towards the northeast. Your forecast in detail for today. Enjoy your holiday. More clouds, especially later this afternoon. Some sun with showers around, topping off near 87. I bumped it up just a little bit. Winds north to northeast, 10 to 15 knots. Watch out for the rip currents. Seas 2 to 4 feet. Tonight, a few showers, also breezy, especially along the coast. 75 is what we're looking at. And a look ahead over the next four days, rain chances in there. Then we're back to the same old, same of what we're used to. Afternoon storms and 90 degrees. Guys, back to you. All right. Thank you, Chris. Hopefully it'll be sunny long enough for us to enjoy a little piece of this holiday. A burger. A burger <laughs> or a hot dog. Just an hour when we get thank off of work. Sir.
straight ahead on CBS 4 News at noon. A great recipe that will guarantee your Memorial Day party won't fall flat. Speaking Mr. Food is next. Yes, and first, get the latest news you want when you want it. I'll, you sign up to the CBS 4 News Notifier. So I go to our website at cbs4news.com. And we'll be right back. She lived in luxury, part of a royal family. Then everything changed. How did she go from a palace to a prison in the most inhumane conditions? A story of survival and courage from the extraordinary woman who lived to tell it. Tuesday at 5 and 11 on CBS 4 News. This is a test of the emergency alert system. Closed captioning is sponsored by Biscayne Diagnostic Imaging, offering high quality open MRI. Visit us also in Weston and Hallandale. Well, your Memorial Day party can really take the cake with this next recipe. As the food shows us, he's still a pop cake. We're kicking off outdoor season today with backyard bashes and plenty of picnics. Well, how would it feel if we could be the talk of the town by baking a cake that was quick, easy, had only three ingredients, and tasted like we fussed? Would it feel super? You betcha. Here's how. Using any brands at all in a bowl, we combine a packaged lemon cake mix along with a large egg, and get this a cup of lemon-lime soda. That's it. We pour it all into a sprayed 9 by 13 baking dish and into a preheated 350 oven. It goes for about, oh, about 30 minutes or until it passes the toothpick test. Now, when it cools, we can give it a dusting of confectioner sugar or if we've got some lemon drop candies, we can crush them up and sprinkle those on top for some extra sparkle. Yeah, but even plain, this light, moist, refreshing, Lemon-lime flavored cake looks as good as it tastes. You bring it out to the patio with a pitcher of fresh squeezed lemonade or slip it into our picnic basket for a lazy summer afternoon pick-me-up. It is the best. And the best part of that is that we can make it up in a jiffy and look like heroes. Now, if you'd like the recipe, you know, just to keep on hand, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope, Mark, Soda Pop Cake, to me, Mr. Food, right here at the station, or look for it online for baking the cake that's the talk of the town. I mean, one, two, three, we get all the attention, and that's a well-deserved, ooh, it's so good. We have more now on that breaking news we've been following for you, a suicide attack in Israel. Some live pictures we're looking at right now, this developing story happening just east of Tel Aviv. At least 50 people were injured. We'll, of course, have more for you on CBS 4 News at 5. And that's it for CBS 4 News at noon. Thanks for watching. Once again, we'll see you first on CBS 4 News at 5 o'clock. Have a great day. Good Memorial Day. Bye-bye. Thank you.